I, I thank the gentleman from uh, Nevada for yielding. And I, I want to echo what my colleagues have said. It is time for us to bring a clean funding resolution to the floor of the House that would get a majority of Democratic support and it would get strong Republican support to reopen the government. Not to reopen it in pieces, but to reopen all of government for all Americans. And it's time for us to do that now. Now, we've had several funding bills that have come to the floor to fund bits and snippets of the federal government, but that's really not the way to do it. And in fact, uh, as the gentleman knows, that when the government was shut down by Republicans, it wasn't shut down piecemeal, and so it should not be reopened piecemeal. It should be open in full. Today in my office, uh, I happen to represent a district in Maryland that has a lot of uh, workers, workers who work at virtually every uh, agency of the federal government. And I would note that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle have brought forward piecemeal funding bills that fund a handful of agencies. Well, there are 486 uh, federal agencies, and we haven't brought 486 funding bills uh, to this floor. And so it's rather silly to propose funding the government in these little snippets. But these three workers were in my office. One of them works for the Environmental Protection Agency. The other works for the Department of Health and Human Services, and in fact, um, at the Center for Medicare Services. And the other one works at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And as I talk to the workers, number one, I can't even begin, Mr. Speaker, to explain to you how devastated they felt with being tagged non-essential, um, knowing that their work is, is, is vital, um, but not really feeling validated as workers. And so that was kind of one thing. But the other thing is that they're doing their jobs because they believe in their jobs. They believe in the work that they are doing uh, for the government. They believe in the work that they are doing uh, for taxpayers. And then lastly, they're worried about all of the work that goes undone. They're worried um, at, at EPA that, uh, the, you know, letting the public know about um, in, inspections and about conditions of water and, um, and other things in the environment in communities across this country is not happening because the EPA is not in business. Uh, the worker who was in my office, Julia, who works at uh, the Department of Health and Human Services, Mr. Speaker, is worried because in the work that she does, her specific job is to train uh, Medicare providers so that they indicate the right codes when they submit for payment so that there's not fraud. And the other part of her job is that she's supposed to look through those claims and make sure that if there is any indication of a problem or fraud, that it gets referred to the Inspector General and gets referred to the Department of Justice. And at a time when we're both implementing uh, health care, but also when uh, Medicare is, is uh, being used, it's really important that that actually, her job, Julia's job, actually saves taxpayers' money, and yet she's at home. Uh, the worker who came to my office today, Emma, from NASA, is very concerned because part of her job is working uh, on systems that would help deliver us our next generation of weather satellites because we have a gap in our satellite coverage. And the farther we get behind in developing that new weather satellite, it means that it puts all of us in jeopardy in terms of receiving the information that we need. And of course, Mr. Speaker, as Americans know, we don't get our weather from the Weather Channel. We get our weather from the National Weather Service, from the folks at NOAA, from the people at NASA, and yet they are at home. Uh, the other thing that these workers explain to me is it's great personal cost to them. Uh, Secunda, who works at the Environmental Protection Agency, told me today that she takes care of her mother in addition to herself and other family members on her salary, and that she has been worried and up night and not unable to sleep because she's not really clear how she's going to be able to meet those expenses. Uh, Julia, who works at, um, at CMS and HHS, uh, has an 11-year-old child who has had brain damage when he was born, and he's a special needs child. And Aiden 
a wonderful smile and a beautiful, you know, face and voice, and he needs his mom, but they've also been able to take care of services for him with the salary that she makes at HHS. Julia told me, Emma, rather, at NASA, uh, said to me that her 12- and 14-year-old really don't understand why she's at home instead of going to work. And so these workers aren't just sort of faceless bureaucracy. They have lives and they have responsibilities, and yet with the federal government shut down, we're not meeting, the, we're not help, enabling them to meet those responsibilities. And then, Mr. Speaker, one of the things that they said to me is that if you open up the government piecemeal, it doesn't really help them out. Uh, take the example of Julia at HHS. If her job is to make referrals to the Department of Justice and to the Office of the Inspector General, and she's at her job if by some fortuitous chance our Republican colleagues decide to restart HHS, what that means is that she doesn't have anybody to refer that fraud to because they're not on the job at the Department of Justice. If NASA is working, then, and NOAA is not, then there, that joint work that takes place between agencies can't. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, what we do know is that every week that the federal government is shut down, it costs us, it costs taxpayers $10 billion. $10 billion every week that the federal government is shut down. And Mr. Speaker, the federal government has been shut down now for a week, chalk up $10 billion to the taxpayers. And so you can see that the entire purpose of the strategy to shut down government is in fact costing taxpayers money. And, and finally, I will share with you, I read in the paper today, Mr. Speaker, that uh, three uh, uh, scientists and researchers won the Nobel Prize for Medicine. Two of those, are, they won the prize for developing a, um, a, a way to track cell traffic so that it could make determinations about when appropriate packages of cells in the body are being delivered for certain purposes. And in doing that, it could help us make discoveries for immunological diseases, for neurological diseases, for things like diabetes. These scientists actually um, had been working, some of them had been working under a grant from the National Institutes of Health for about the last 30 years. And it made me think that if we are not funding the National Institutes of Health and other government agencies that do research right now, that the work that they've been doing for the last 30 years is work, if you think forward 30 years, that we're going to be missing because we have failed to fund the kind of research uh, that we need. And so there are ripple effects to the cost of shutting down the federal government. And then finally, in my district, I plan every year to have a college fair for the students in my district. Usually about 2,500 to 3,000 students show up. Our college fair is coming up, uh, supposed to come up this weekend. We usually get assistance from NASA. They bring uh, all kinds of projects and experiments to the science fair to get young people engaged in the science, technology, engineering, and math STEM fields so that we can get them invested in tackling these jobs for the 21st century. We usually get assistance from the Department of Education to educate young people about uh, loan and grant opportunities that might be available to them as they decide to make their college selections. And so I just got an email, even as I was sitting here on the floor, that none of these agencies will be able to participate in a college fair for our young people who are preparing to go to college next year. And they are going to miss out on those opportunities about learning what's available to them and the, the challenges that they face because the federal government is shut down. This is a really sad commentator, commentary, Mr. Speaker, on the impact of the, of the shutdown and the ripple effect that that has both throughout our economy and in our local communities. And so I will close by urging, urging Speaker Boehner, Mr. Speaker, to please bring a clean funding bill to the floor of the House of Representatives. Let it up for a vote. And you know what? If it fails, it does. But I know that in this body, Republicans and Democrats like me will support that bill. And we'll do it even though I don't agree with the number. I never supported the number. But I know